All right then guys, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, I'm gonna be taking a look at another laser engraver. This time it's a budget friendly laser engraver from a company called Elgo Laser. It's their DIY kit. It was sent to me for the purposes of the video, although I'm not being paid to say nice things, I will be giving my honest opinion. It's supposed to be really simple to use and idiot proof. So even an idiot like me should be able to use it. So in this video, I'm gonna get it out of the box, assemble it, and see how easy it is to use. So that's enough yakking from me. Let's get on with the video. As it's a fairly small box, right at the top, laser engraving user manual. Laser engraving consumable package. We'll have a look at that a bit later. So um, looks like three mil wood. Some various items to engrave on. We'll have a look at that in detail. So rather than bore you to death getting all this stuff out, what I'm going to do is unpack it. And then I'll show you once I've got it all out the box. Okay guys, so there is everything that comes in the box. So you've got your power leads and the USB lead. That's your control box. Comes complete with the on off, the emergency stop switch. And you get a couple of keys so you can turn it off for safety. That's your belts, which operate the X axis. Got your four sections of rail. The X axis itself, this is where the laser actually fits onto. And as you can see, it's got limit switches on this machine. Got various brackets and things which help to hold the framework together. You have a limit switch, various tools come with it, screwdriver, allen keys, wrench or spanner, Get various screws and things. Got your Wi-Fi antenna, get your safety goggles, and last but no means least, you get the laser module itself. Now this is only a five watt laser, but it's still capable of engraving on a wide variety of materials and cut in various materials as well. It does take a bit longer than a more powerful laser, but it still does the job. And one thing I've already noticed about this, which I like, is this guard is attached with magnets. So it just simply pulls it off if you need to like gain access and it just slips back on again, which is quite nice. I like that. So let's see how easy it is to assemble and get it working. So the first thing to do is assemble the frame. So easy to work out which piece goes where. You've got the two sections on the front and the left side with the scale on it. You have got to be wary of which way round you put the rails because there are holes for like the feet, etc. So just make sure you orientate them all around the right way. And they basically, the front and rear go inside the side rails and you fit them together using 25 mil screw in each corner. And you'll notice that on the back, if you can see it, you've got this piece and you've got one either side and that's basically to stop the X rail sliding right off the back. So make sure when you do it, that these are positioned towards the back on both sides. So next up, you've got your X rail. And obviously that's got the rollers at either end. So you just fit that on the frame from the front. So it's between the sets of rollers. So, Simply insert the frame between the sets of rollers on both sides and push that into place. 
like so. With the rail in place, now you flip the frame over so it sits upside down and you get these four corner brackets which fit to the underneath in each corner on the frame. You've got these M5 by 14 screws and it fits using the outermost holes. This is why I say be careful which way you orientate these because there's a few various different holes on these rails. And then that just basically fits in the corner using the outer two holes. So next up, we've got the leveling feet and you've got four of these, so obviously one in each corner. It says in the manual to put them in the corresponding holes. There's two holes available on each corner bracket that we've just fitted and it says to put them in the corresponding holes. So whether you put them on the thinner sections or the side sections, I don't suppose it matters. I'm going to put mine on the widest position. So they just simply screw in to the L bracket on each corner. And with the feet all fitted in place, we can now flip the machine back round the right way. Next job is to fit these red brackets. And you're using one 14 mil screw for that. And it goes in this hole here and this little gap goes towards the outer rail and that is going to be where the belt goes through and is secured. So they basically just go across the front and side rails. And if you've got your rails running the right way, you should have a hole. So once you've fitted these, next step is the belts. Now, Feed it through the hole in the red bracket with the teeth facing down. And then you've got two rollers on this one. And this one here, you've got like a cog. So the belt has to go under this roller, up over that middle one, back down the other side and under the, the back roller and out through the gap in the red one. Hopefully you can see roughly what I'm doing. So it goes through the red bit, along the rail, underneath this one, over this middle one, and then you've got to try and get it back down and under the rear roller. Not the easiest of things to do, but it is doable. Right, so you should be able to see that under, over, under the rear roller, and then you should have a hole in the red bit at the back. To secure it, you're using the short screw and a washer. It's just a case of locate that in the hole. It should go through the red rail into the end of the main rail itself. Make sure you, you get this underneath the washer. And when you're doing, do one end up tight. And then before you actually tighten the front end, pull on the belt, make sure it's flat across there, and then tighten it up.
Next up is the limit switch. Now one's already fitted on the X-rail, so you've not got to worry about that one. This one goes on the frame, at the left side front. So you've got the little tiny screws. Now the slightly shorter, thicker ones secure the red bracket to the frame. And then the longer, thinner ones secure the actual switch itself onto the red bracket. And there's holes in the frame. Seems to work. Okay. Now we can fit the laser, and you'll see it's got this kind of bracket on the back and that basically slides in these grooves on this bracket then you've got two of these silver knobs that just screw in through one of these side holes so once you locate the laser itself in the slot that just slides in and then to tighten it we can just insert one of those silver bits and tighten it up and that will hold the laser in place so now we're on to fitting the control panel to the frame. That gets secured to the front of the frame. You've got two holes in the frame. So this goes on the front and then it gets screwed from the back. Now, you'll notice in the manual, you've got two of these long bolts that we use to secure the frame together left. And it says to use these to fit the control panel, but don't do that because they're too long. And Elgo Laser actually specified on a number of occasions, do not use the longer screws because you'll damage the internal board. So although it says in the instructions to use these, do not, you should have a little bag that says on it, please use this to fix the controller box panel instead. And they're shorter ones. So make sure you use the shorter ones. Okay, so the cable goes along the back of the box. Then you've got the first connections that go into the limit switch. And then cable will run along this side. Now you can't get these around the wrong way. You've got this switch goes in there. I mean, they are labeled anyway. Y, XL. But you can't because they've got different connectors on anyway. So they can only go one way. But they just get put go the other way. Could just push in like so, and these ones go onto the limit switch. Now you probably can't see, but my big hands are in the way. So one connects into here and the two little ones go onto the limit switch. And then the cable will run along and 
same again it is clearly labeled x l but because they've got different connections on you can not get them around the wrong way because they'll only fit in one way Now, there are cable ties in the box of consumables to enable you to secure the cable so it's neater and held in place. I'm just going to leave that bit off. I'll do that once I've got it all up and running. Okay, so it's all plugged in. Uh, let's switch it on. Hold the power button down till the lights come on. And that all seems to be working. Okay then guys, so that is the laser fully assembled. Hopefully people will find the video of the assembly process handy. I tried to include as much detail as I possibly could without making the video too long. So hopefully I've covered enough. Um, as far as this laser DIY kit from Elgo Laser goes, the firmware is actually upgradable. They are coming out with a 10 and a 20 watt laser in the very near future. So you'll be able to upgrade from the 5 watt laser that the kit currently comes with to either a 10 or a 20 watt. Um, next video, I'm gonna be putting it through its paces and seeing what it can actually do. And that will be released on the channel in the coming days. So keep your eyes peeled for that. If you're not subscribed to the channel already, then why not consider subscribing, it's free. Um, so that's it for this video. Until the next video, um, stay safe and you will see me in the next video. Cheers for watching guys, hope you enjoyed this one and I'll see you in the next one.